Well, good uh, good morning, everybody, from um, here in the workshop. This video is for Eli Darry, or Darry, I hope I pronounced it okay. He's asked me, because <coughs> apparently he's got one of these, a laid like this. <coughs> oh, excuse me. He's got a laid like this. And he's asked me, how do you do a thread on it? Because it's not um, intuitive, I suppose. There's lots of videos on YouTube on how to cut a thread, but they are on bigger lathes, more professional lathes, that have got uh, what's called a half knot. Um, and they are a little bit more easier, shall we say, to use. There's not a lot of fiddling. There's a lot of fiddling about to get this to cut a thread, but it can be done. Uh, without too much trouble um all you got to do is just set up the back gears get the get the get the speed right get the feed right and small cuts and you'll be there so what we're going to be using uh we're going to be using this this tool right which is uh a uh, an external thread cutter you can get internal ones but this is external one um and this is uh metric uh, because uh, there's two types you've got uh, American and metric is 60 degrees uh, Whitworth and BSF being British is 55 and of course BA another British one is 47 and a half degrees uh, and that is the the angle of the tip if you like so uh, that being 60 degrees and uh, so that is uh, sits on there like that so this is this is a, a gauge tool if you like for making sure you've got the right angles when you're reprofiling them um i know i'm rabbiting on a bit quick but i want to get through this because i don't want it to be a long video uh, otherwise you'll all lose interest anyway so uh, i've already got a bit of metal in here we're going to be turning a m10 thread um which is i haven't got my book here yes i have yes i have oh, right. M10, so it's an M10 course, uh, which is fairly standard. Uh, it, so it has a pitch of 1.5. Okay, so if you're cutting threads, you need one of these. You need Zeus tables, um, easily available on eBay or Amazon or wherever. Uh, and that gives you, um, you know, all the various thread types. There's loads of information on here. Thread types, I mean, in fact, uh, some of you might already have them um you know uh, how to equally sp space holes when you're drilling all that kind of thing uh very hand very handy piece of kit this is a metric revision uh so it's got all the metric stuff in as well as all the imperial um imperial for those it's imperial is mainly american stuff although i think a lot of american stuff is now going over to metric so anyway, uh, enough of my waffle. Let's uh, get onto the lathe. We'll have a look. I'll show you the back gears and I'll show you where we're going to be. Uh, well, I've already got it set up, but anyway, where will I do the chain, alter the speeds and feeds? So, uh, so without further ado, I'll stop this rambling diatribe now, and we'll move on. We'll move on and have a look uh, in uh, in the gearbox at the back there. So, hang on a mo, and I'll be straight back. Okay, so we're looking in the back of the lathe now. And so you, we've got the three pulleys. We've got the motor, the idler, and the main. Um, there's, the, uh, there's the clutch for the, uh, for the drill head. Um, so these uh, set up the, uh, the spindle feed. Spindle feed? Yes, spindle feed. Right, speed, not feed, speed. The spindle speed. Right, so according to... Uh, because if you look in the, the the manual's actually very good at this for setting it up. Um, so we are in um, we're down at 160 RPM. Um, so we get we get six speeds here um, on the uh, on the spindle, so we can go from 160 to 1600. We don't want to be 1600. You want to be as slow as possible to be able to control what's going on. <coughs> At the bottom here, right, these are your back gears, and comes what comes with the lathe is a full set of gears for metric and imperial cutting. 
So what you do, oops, well, let me just rustle a bit, another bit of paper. Looking in the book again, according to what you're doing, is you change those gears to give you the right speed. So it's those gears, and here we have, this is the control, or the speed control, if you like, because it's uh, for your lead screw. Okay, this is fed through a dog clutch from that gear at the bottom there. Okay, so you've got it coming off, um, coming out the gearbox in there, through these gears. That's the last one. Through a dog clutch here. That drives your lead screw. Okay, so you can drive this at two ratios. Okay, you've got a low, a neutral, and a high. <coughs> okay, so whichever whichever it tells you to do it in the book now we're doing uh let me just pop this up there if it will if it will if it will let me just go back onto the bench so, so we are doing uh we, we're doing this i'm set up for this one so 1.5 right so i've got these gears on a 63 a 32 a 16 a 27 okay you when you get around to do it yourself you'll actually see what i mean um, and it says the lever needs to be in the left position, which it is. Right, so we are now all set up um, for turning. Yeah. Um, now then, one thing is, when you've engaged the dog clutch, you leave it. You don't touch it again until you've actually finished the th and you're satisfied with the thread. So I used two welding magnets to hold it in position because then it's quite natural for you for when, when you're turning is to disengage the lead screw when you come into the end. Not in this case. What we're doing is we're going to be using the on-off switches and the reverse. Yeah, And you'll see that very shortly. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is going to, I'll get the camera set up. We've got the tool and everything set up ready to go. The metal's turned to the right size, and so we'll crack on. So, back in a mo. Okay, so, what we're going to do, okay, like I've said, the back gears and this and, and your lead screw ratio are all set up. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to touch off and bring it back out again. We're going <coughs> to engage the dog clutch. Lock it off if you can. We are in forward drive. Okay. So what we do now is press go and it should run quite happily forwards like that. Okay. Now, because there's backlash in the system, um, this is where you score over your. This is where the lead screw scores over this. You've now got a bit of messing about to do. Uh, what I would have normally done, in fact, what I shall do now, just clean this, clean this off because I've had the oil can around it, and um, we'll zero, we'll zero that. Okay. So that now gives me a zeroed. You possibly didn't see that. What I'm, what I'm actually zeroing. I'm just. Just shuffle you all around a little. What I'm actually zeroing, I've just zeroed here. Okay, because that then gives me a reference to go back to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring the tool away from the work. Okay, so the tool's no longer touching the work. I'm going to switch it into reverse and run it back. I know it's a bit of a faff, but still. So, back to zero, which is where we were. I'm going to go one, two, three. We're cutting aluminium, so I can take a... Normally, you know, when you're doing your initial cuts, it's not too bad. But as you start to cut the thread deeper, then you need to be... You know, you take, you take smaller cuts because it's only a fine tool and uh, and you've got to be careful so here we go then right so 
We've moved the tool forward. We've zeroed here once again to get our datum back. Into forward and So we cut a little bit further, so I could possibly actually have brought it a bit further forward. So we'll come back. I normally go full turn because then you've got some idea what's going on. Into reverse and back. Into forward, back again. We'll give it another three. I will zero that. Okay, so I mean it's a bit of a bit long winded. Um you know if you had a half knot you wouldn't necessarily do all those. So what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna continue cutting this now. Um and then we'll uh we'll come and we'll look at it at the end. I mean I think you've got the basics of it now. So I'll just continue. Um and uh, and we'll see when we've done. And if you're wondering why you would do it on a lathe, okay, um, you might be doing a thread that's not standard. Now this is uh, a ten by one point five or M ten by one point five die for cutting external threads. You could be doing something really weird um, that needs a. Uh, a thread that you can't get dies for with it being on a big shaft or something small or something peculiar i mean there are some peculiar thread forms out there that you can't you know so you you have to do it on the lathe uh, i forgot to mention um these little dealies uh these are thread gauges um so this is a set of iso thread gauges you would also get them in various, uh, you can get Whitworth, you can get BSF, etc. Um, but this is the one I've got here. It's a 1.5, and it's good to see. It's handy just to see that the thread's going okay, and a that you're actually cutting the right thread in the first place. Or if you've got a thread, if you've got a bolt, you don't know what pitch it is, then using one of these, when well, we're using one of these, uh, is going to get you out of trouble there, hopefully. Uh, if you have a set, because you might be like me, uh, you might be working uh, anything from metric to BA, uh, cycle thread, anything like that uh, comes in here. And so, uh, yeah, so a good set of these, uh, or a set of several, uh, one in each, um, you know, if you're that way inclined. <coughs> and, um, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, they come in handy anyway. Slight waffle, uh, so we pop it on there. And I can see that we're not quite done yet. And also looking at the at the thread itself, we're not quite there. Um, you can uh, do it using a micrometer. Um, and all, it is all kinds of... If you look on, on the other people who've got the kit, I just kind of rough and ready it. So we're getting near to where we want to be. So what we'll do now, we'll ease down on the cut depth. Because that way, you can also, if you want to just get where you want to be, if you stop it early, you can rotate it by hand. You'll find a technique that works for you. Right, now where's we? Uh, right, so... Let's just try a nut on that, shall we? Okay, so there we go. We have popped the nut on. The nut goes on nice and easy. Um, could check it with the thread gauge if you wanted to. Well, I think if a nut goes on, then the thread's about right. Especially, this is a new nut anyway. So, so yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so we just heave that out. We can... Uh, uh, Unlock the dog clutch now, and I'll stick that back in neutral anyway. Um, yeah, so don't forget, leave it, leave everything in forward, and then we can come back out the way. Um, we can take our little dealie out of here. Oh, 
Oh, oh, excuse me. So, there we go. 1M10 thread. And just screw the nut on. Like I say, it's not it's not difficult to do. It's just a real faff because you're messing about all the time. Uh, but once you've once you've done a couple and you can get into your rhythm, um, you know, of forwards, cut, you know, then wind it out, reverse back, then wind it in plus two or whatever, zero it off, and then it's it's yeah it does i mean it's a lot of messing about but but uh but yeah we'll get there i mean you, you do get there it's just um it's just more difficult on one of these lathes than it is on a big one um right well i hope you enjoy all enjoyed that especially uh you eli i hope it helps you mate if you need any more any more information just get back to me um and i'll try and help you out um yeah so that's it for threading on the lathe, or threading on this particular lathe, anyway. Um, like I say, if you've got a lathe with a half knot, it's very straightforward. Uh, if you've got one like this, it's not so straightforward. But as long as you set it up as per the handbook, uh, if you haven't got one, you can download them off, for, off the internet for free. Uh, they're readily available. Um, yeah, so... I hope you all enjoyed it, and um, they'll, I'll have another one reference to the Lancaster, um, at least Kirkby, coming up uh, in a few days after this one. And um, yeah, so have a good time, stay cool out there, enjoy yourselves, enjoy the good weather because it's it's nice and sunny here today. It has been all week, and long may it continue. Get some uh, get some bike riding done. So yeah, so we're, I'm waffling, aren't I? So I'm going to bugger off now. Have a good time. Take care and see you all on the next one. Bye, everybody.